Well, after two years, the base MacBook Pro finally gets an updated design, a much deserved one at that. We get the 2021 chassis here and all the goodies that come with that, minus one of the USB-C ports, unfortunately, but with the brand new M3 chip. I have the cheapest model here that goes for $1599 with eight gigabytes of unified memory, unfortunately. And in this video, I'm gonna see how it stacks up to the base MacBook Air M2 with also eight gigabytes of unified memory and an M2 chip, along with the cheapest M3 Pro MacBook Pro with 18 gigs of unified memory. I'm going to be running some quick benchmarks, but more importantly, some creative tasks that I've painstakingly prepared for this video to give you an idea of where this laptop, you know, stands, how it performs, and if it's worth this arguably cheap baseline $1,600 price tag. All right, so for our testing, we have a base 2022 MacBook Air 13 inch to sort of serve as a baseline for benchmarks and of course the creative tests. It has a 3.48 gigahertz M2 chip and is paired with eight gigabytes of unified memory. Next up, of course, we have the brand new base MacBook Pro 14 inch with a 4.05 gigahertz M3 chip also paired with eight gigabytes of unified memory. And last up, we have the cheapest space black MacBook Pro 14 inch with a 4.05 gigahertz M3 Pro chip paired with 18 gigabytes of unified memory. After running Geekbench 6, the base M2 MacBook Air scores 2645 single core and 9935 multi-core. Next up, the M3 MacBook Pro scores 3169 single core and 11830 multi-core, a 17% and 16% improvement over the M2 respectively. And last up, the M3 Pro MacBook Pro scores a similar 3187 single core, but a higher 14254 multi-core, an 8% improvement over the M3 and a 30% improvement over the M2 multi-core and respectively, of course. I also ran Cinebench on all three of these devices. The M2 MacBook Air scored 8211, the M3 MacBook Pro scored scored 10, 341, a 21% improvement over the M2. And finally, the M3 Pro MacBook Pro scored 13,192, a 22% improvement over the M3 and a 38% improvement over the M2. But as you will come to find, benchmarks are not everything. So with the benchmarks out of the way, we can kind of see how the M3 MacBook Pro stacks up on paper, but now let's see how it stacks up in practice with some real world creative tests. And I know there's more to creative work and just pro work besides photo editing and video editing, but this is primarily what I do. And I can definitely tell the differences between, you know, extra RAM, extra horsepower, GPU, CPU, etc. So first we're gonna start off with the base M2 MacBook Air. You can get this for $9.99 from Apple. It's an eight gig variant. So that should sort of match up with the eight gigs in the M3 MacBook Pro. And of course I will get to the M3 and the M3 Pro MacBook Pro later on. So first up, let's start with some Lightroom photo editing. Um, I love Lightroom for editing raw photos and also thumbnails. And these are a few photos that I took for my next Skyline wallpaper pack, so stay tuned for that here. I've chosen this image because I think it's quite interesting here. And I'm going to try to apply the same edit across all three tests here with each laptop to be super scientific, especially when I end up copying the effects to all of the images and exporting them and timing that. So let's affect, or excuse me, adjust exposure first up, see how that does. So I'm gonna say negative 0.26 should be good. Let's up contrast. Everything's going well. Photo editing is a really, I wouldn't say easy, but straightforward process for any processor above, you know, M1, I would say. So, so you're not gonna see that much of a difference across the board here, editing an individual photo, but again, export times will vary. Um, let's adjust shadows maybe, um, white and uh, maybe add some sharpness. So I'm actually gonna round these out. So 60 sharpness, we'll do 15 texture, 15 clarity. Uh, what else here? I'm gonna add some saturation. How about 10 saturation? I'm just sort of exaggerating the colors, making it more contrasty. 15 contrast, negative 0.25 exposure. Okay, so I've adjusted exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, um, saturation, and added some clarity and texture and sharpening. So before and after we can see that here, let's apply this effect to all the rest here. So I'm going to Command C, and then I'm going to individually copy these over. I tried to do it all at once yesterday and I couldn't do it. Maybe I'm just a noob at Lightroom, but copying the effect here, copying the effect here. This is going pretty smoothly um, as you can see. So yeah, as you can see here, every single one of these photos has the effect now. I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can also sort of scrub through them here, no problem. The M2 chip is handling this quite well. So yeah, as you can see here, photo editing individual photos, even at high resolutions like 33 megapixels and RAW, even on a base M2 MacBook Air with eight gigabytes of memory and no fan is a dream of an experience, no lag, no stutter when you're you know adjusting the settings and stuff. 
in the next two tests, I'm gonna skip that entirely and just get to the export times or time, uh, which is the next thing that we're gonna do here. I'm gonna export 17 edited raw images here again, all at 33 megapixels. So I'm going to click the export button. We're gonna export them large or 100% quality edited into a folder on my desktop. And I am going to time this process right now. So here we are here, timer is ready. Three, two, one. Okay, so I timed that at 36 seconds, just about 37 seconds, I think. We'll say it's 37 seconds, so I'm gonna write that down here. Pretty impressive for, again, 17 individual raw files. So I'll open that up here, and as you can see, they are all edited. I can open them up too. There we go. Um, so impressive even for a base MacBook Air, but next up, let's test out the M3 MacBook Pro. All right, so I got the M3 MacBook Pro connected for Lightroom, and let's jump right back into editing here with this image. I'm gonna just do some edits just again, just sort of like haphazardly, then I'll copy the correct ones and do a little export. So, you know, adjusting highlights, contrast, shadows. Um, again, this is a very similar experience, maybe a little more snappy, but you know, again, this isn't like the craziest, most intensive workflow, um, at least again, ind individually editing photos, but let me reset the edits on this image here and copy the one I did last time over so we can test out export times. So reset edits. And again, here are the original edits that I did from the previous test with the M2 MacBook Air. So I will copy them over here and yeah, we can now uh, edit or excuse me, export 17 raw photos at 33 megapixels a piece to the desktop and see how long this takes. So again, a uh, large 100% quality in three, two, one. All right, so it's done and it did it in 32 seconds. So let's go to the desktop here, raw edited, and there you have it. So that isn't too much of an edge over the M2 in the MacBook Air. Maybe this is a RAM limitation. Maybe we'll see the uh, M3 Pro model do a lot better. So um, that's interesting. 32 seconds opposed to 30, what was it? 37 or 35 seconds? Yeah, 35 seconds with the M2. So interesting. All right, and now we have the M3 Pro MacBook Pro hooked up for Lightroom. I'm not even gonna fiddle with the edits here. As you saw, they are applied to all 17 of these raw images, and I'm going to quickly export them and see how much of a difference this chip makes. So they're all selected. I'm gonna click the export button. JPEG large, 100% quality. We're going to make a new uh, folder on the desktop called raw edited. And we are going to create that and then export. I'm gonna pull up my timer in three, two, one, export. All right, so that was 25 seconds, almost 27 seconds. Let me write that down. Well, that was quite a bit faster, I would say. It doesn't seem like much, but when you're exporting a lot more images than just that, maybe 500, for example, um, those seconds add up. And I'm curious to see, or I'm curious if the 18 gigs of RAM, so an extra 10 gigabytes of unified memory or RAM makes a difference, because maybe the eight gigabytes of RAM in the M2 Air and the M3 Pro sort of limit the processor's performance or sort of bottleneck that. But the thing is though, what's great about this video is we're not worried about you know pre-configured models. We're we're worried about the ones that you can buy in the store. So, you know, what we see is what we get here. So yeah, the M3 Pro definitely makes a difference and I'm sure that RAM does too. All right, so with Lightroom out of the way, now let's move on to Adobe Photoshop. And I have a composition here that I want to go through. It's no easy composition. It is several, I think seven 50 megapixel raw images from my Alpha One. I did this sort of multiplication shot with this uh, cat figurine that I got. Uh, so yeah, let's just get started here. I first have to scale this up because as you can see here, I have some white borders that I don't want and it's a little hard to scroll through. Look, look, I got the beach ball of death happening here. Lots of high resolution stacked images here. So here we go. I have this white border I wanna get rid of. So let's um, zoom out here. Um, and again, let's just take notice here. This is a little bit laggy to um, interact with. So I'm going to select the transform little corner here and I'm gonna scale this 102%. And I'm gonna click the check mark and it's taking some time here. Transforming progress, all right, well, this is interesting. Maybe I should have timed this, this is taking a minute. Okay, so that took about like 10 seconds, so interesting. That kind of shows the you know limitations with the M2 chip and maybe eight gigabytes of RAM too. But anyway, let's start revealing some cats here. Um, I'm going to start erasing around um, this one specifically. So, okay, rasterize and 
we will uncover this cat. There we go. And then we'll get to this one. I want to uncover one sort of over in this area, so I will erase part of this image, probably make the eraser a little bit smaller. There we go. Here's another cat. There we go, uncovering more of this cat here. You can see how high resolution this image is. This is like super zoomed up, 266%. And then if I zoom out, there we go. I also have this white background that I'm going to use. I'm also going to use the base layer, which is the seventh raw image to create a completely white background. So I'm going to erase what is inside here. And then I'm gonna use content aware fill here, sample from here. And that's taking a second and there we go. So there you have it. There is this composition. I think the border between the background is a little crappy, but you know what? We did a good enough job. So I'm going to now export this to my desktop as a PNG. Cat multiplication, save. We can go over here. It's taking a minute. There we go. So that took a couple seconds and uh, here's the composition. Again, really high resolution. So that is Photoshop with the M2 chip. Now let's see how the M3 and of course M3 Pro stack up. All right, here we have Photoshop on the M3 MacBook Pro here. I'm gonna do the same scaling that we did uh, before. So I'm gonna select all these raw images. I'm going to go to the transform or show transform tool and I'm going to scale all of these images to 102%. Press the check mark and let's just sort of see how long this takes. Beach ball of death with this too. It's taking its time. Again, I'm not timing this, but I'm just sort of eyeballing it here. Okay, so that took its time. I think that was a little bit faster than the M2, but I can double check in post, but there we go. And now we can start to uncover. I'm gonna just do one cat. I'm gonna try to uncover one, and then I'm gonna export the finished PSD here in a minute. So let's just uncover one or two cats here, because I don't have all night to edit this video. Um, so we'll make the eraser tool big. Here we go. So here's one. Great. So, I mean, the overall experience um, is about the same. A little bit of lag there, as you can see. Um, but maybe a little more responsive. Maybe that's in my head. I don't know. Maybe this is a sugar pill situation. But, um, you know, again, similar sort of navigation experience. But anyway, let's export the final product here that I made on the M2. So here we go. I'm zooming in, zooming out. Um, pretty responsive. A little bit of lag, actually. There we go. Uh, let's export. And I'm going to, again, eyeball this, see if I notice any noticeable difference. But I can time this in post, which I probably will. Um, but I just don't have a number for you here. So let's do uh, export as PNG. And then I'll do it to the desktop. All right, and let's uh, see how long this takes. Okay, so that may have been a little bit faster, but it feels about the same. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is definitely a heavy duty project, lots of 50 megapixel images, but uh, yeah, I guess just eyeballing it, I don't really notice that much of a difference, but uh, maybe a little bit more snappiness, but like would I benefit from that by buying this laptop? I don't know. But again, maybe that's just this kind of task. Um, we'll have to see if the M3 Pro really ups the ante here. And here's the M3 Pro MacBook Pro for the Photoshop test. Let's scale these images to 102% like before. Check, see how long this takes. Maybe it's more instantaneous. We get the beach ball of death and a little loading bar here. So clearly this is a intensive task. So it's gonna take a minute and done. So that was definitely a little faster, not like way, way faster, but I would say noticeably eyeball faster or I eyeballed that, whatever that means. These demos are literally destroying my mental health, but you know what? It's worth it, it's worth it. We'll continue here. Let me um, reveal a cat or two as we've done. A little treasure hunt with the eraser tool. It's always good. So there's one. Oh, and we're already revealing another cat. So there we go. Kill two birds with one stone, but I'm still gonna erase more here. All right, so you know, there we go. That's a good experience. Oh, interesting. So this is definitely lagging a little bit too, even here. So clearly this is just a really difficult thing for the computer or maybe the program to handle. So it's a little faster here. Again, I would hope, but uh, yeah, that's probably because there's extra horsepower and RAM to work with. But let's go to the finished PSD here, zoom in and whatever, and then export. So I'm going to do that. And again, I'm gonna eyeball this because it wasn't long enough to really pull out the stopwatch in my opinion. So quick, quick export PNG. We're going to export this to the desktop in three, two, one. There we go. So, I mean, that seems like it took the same amount of time with the M2 and the M3, maybe a little faster here. Maybe I'll do some post-production timing there, but it wasn't that much quicker. So um, yeah, photo editing again is a pretty consistent experience across the board here, if you've noticed. So with photo editing and composition out of the way, finally, let's get to some video editing and not just any video editing, 
4K 120 anamorphic video editing here. I went on a walk to get some pizza the other day at Joe's in Ann Arbor, and I decided to bring along my A7S with my T29 Su Ray 50 mil like cinematic anamorphic lens. It's super cool. I'm trying to use it more for stylized edits like this. It has really cool lens flares and stuff and cool bokeh. Um, but yeah, I shot a few clips here at 120 FPS. Um, and we're going to be doing some color correction, you know, color grading sort of, and then retiming as well. And I'm gonna try to make it scientific across the board here so I can get some accurate export times, which is how we're going to conclude this video here in Final Cut Pro. So first up, let's look at the first clip here. I'm going to edit this clip and then apply the edits to all the rest. I first have to de-squeeze this image because with anamorphic, it shoots it sort of distorted so you get more horizontal resolution. Um, and you'll see what I mean here. So this is what it looks like out of camera, you know, just sort of like 16 by nine, but like super stretched out in the Y axis. So I have to de-squeeze it by scaling the Y axis to 66%. So as you can see here, I recover a lot more horizontal space. So you sort of get this cinematic aspect ratio, which is super cool here. So now I've done that. Next up, I'm going to go into the color correction area here in Final Cut, and I'm immediately going to boost the saturation. I'll do 50% globally. So let's do that. Next, I'm going to boost the uh, highlights, probably my guess is 25%, that looks good. And then I'm going to bring the midtones down by probably 15%, that's about right. And then I'm going to bring the shadows um, into this sort of bluish area. So that is 182 to, I'm gonna say 15%. And then I'm going to do the highlights, kind of orange, I'm a teal and orange guy. Uh, and I'm gonna bring that over, so 40 degrees, 15. So I'm actually gonna take a picture of these edits here so I can replicate them. All right, so as you can see here, I have de-squeezed the footage. I have done some color correction and exposure adjustment and color grading. Now I'm going to finally do the retiming. So this is playing at 30 FPS. I shot it at 120 FPS. If you want a cinematic frame rate of 24, you can slow it down up to six times. So I'm going to go to the retime button or menu here, and I'm going to type in 20%. So we're gonna play this at 24 frames a second. Again, this clip was originally 120 FPS. So you get this really sick slow-mo going on here with the lens flare, of course, in this shot. Um, now I'm going to copy this, you know, these edit settings, excuse me, to all the rest of my clips. So I did Command C, I'm gonna select the rest of my clips here, oops, and um, we're gonna apply that. And this is going to dramatically increase the length of my project from originally one minute to up to, I think, five minutes. So copying the color board, so the color correction, exposure adjustment, scale, the de-squeezing, and the retiming, so paste. And here we go, background rendering is already happening and the project is now up from one minute to about a little over five minutes. So let's play this through, see how it goes. So, so far so good, it's playing pretty well. There's a little bit of stutter, a little bit of lag, um, and I'm also playing this at highest quality. So there, there you go. So if maybe, oh yeah, see there was some lagging right there. So if you want better performance, you can literally choose better performance to see what's going on at a um, you know, lower resolution, but a higher frame rate. So that's nice, but I honestly prefer to play stuff in you know, better quality to see what the final image is gonna look like. So, but that's one of the sacrifices you have to make when you use a lower end, you know, MacBook Air, or MacBook Pro here. But anyway, it's doing pretty well. Um, playing back pretty nicely here. Um, but yeah, you definitely have to do some background rendering to get this smoother or to get smoother playback with the M2 MacBook Air at least. Um, but yeah, so I've copied the settings here. Again, I'll copy them the same way to the other um, timelines on the other MacBook Pros. But now let's uh, get to the export time. So I'm going to do Command E to export this project. And it's taking a minute. Do you see that lag there? Wow. So 4K 120 test, I'm going to export this H.264, so compressed. It's, a, it's an estimated 2.65 gigabytes and I'm going to export this to my desktop. And I'm gonna bring out the timer here in three, two, one. All right, so I got three minutes and 11 seconds here. Let's play this through. There we go, beautiful, anamorphic. Of course, it's playing perfectly because it's a rendered video. I can scrub through this at 10 times, 30 times. A Little laggy, maybe, I don't know, a little choppy, but I think that's just sort of scrubbing through like this. Yeah, very impressive stuff, even for an M2 chip. But again, let's see how the M3 and the M3 Pro stack up. All right, and here we have Final Cut Pro open on the M3 MacBook Pro. I'm gonna quickly start doing the edits that I did last time. So plus 45 in the highlights, negative 10 in the midtones, and then saturation wise, I think it's globally plus 47 of that. And then last up, I'm gonna do the de-squeeze in the transform area. So 
66%. Oh, and then retiming. So we're going to do custom 20%. So here we have that playing it back. Looks pretty good. All right, now I'm going to copy this effect across the board. We're playing in better performance. Let me switch to better quality. Try that again. So it's playing back pretty well, but let's see what happens when I apply this effect to all the clips and then play it back. You know, I may be tripping, all right, but there's a little bit of lag like I saw with the M2 MacBook Air, but it may be playing this back a little bit better. I know there's better GPU horsepower, so that definitely can be taken advantage of, and of course CPU horsepower too. So, but otherwise, pretty similar experience, maybe a tad smoother, um, but yeah. The real truth is gonna come out when we export this uh, and see what those times are like. All right, so the length of the project is the same. I've copied this effect to every single clip. Now it is time to export and see what happens. So 4K 120 test, I'm going to choose not ProRes, H.264, uh, same 2.65 gigabyte size, just so you know, and then we're going to export this to the desktop in three. Oh, my timer just disappeared. Live demos are so much fun and they never go wrong, by the way. Um, three, two, one, go. Well, this might be close. Hmm. 95%. Oh, wow. Okay, so this did that in three minutes and eight seconds here. Uh, let's scrub through this again. All the effects were applied. You know, I spent longer on the timeline with the M2. Um, maybe some background rendering needed to happen that maybe gave the M2 Air a bit of an advantage, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna run these benchmarks, or, or excuse me, these export times again, not connected to power, independently off camera, and then I'm going to put in the numbers as well. So we can just make sure that like, there was no weird sort of like, irregularity going on here. But yeah, um, three minutes and eight seconds compared to three minutes and 12 seconds, that's interesting, and again, this uh, laptop has a fan, so it's very impressive for the M2 MacBook Air, but maybe not so impressive for the M3 MacBook Pro. All right, and finally, let's see how the M3 Pro does with this Final Cut Pro timeline. I'm gonna get straight to the edits here once again, so we're gonna go to the color board. We're gonna do uh, negative or positive 45% with the highlights, negative 10 for the midtones. All right, so everything looks right now. I have to do the de-squeeze, Y scale 66%, and then we're gonna do the retiming. So custom 20%, there we go, play it through. Let's turn this on to better quality. That's going well, okay. And then I'm gonna copy this effect to all of the rest of them. Command Shift V. Um, definitely seeing a little bit better playback out the gate. Maybe that's just my imagination, but I would imagine increased CPU and GPU horsepower and RAM would help your case with regard to video editing. I'd prefer to have this here. I'll watch this shot real quick. Cause like, you know, I went to all the trouble to shoot this and I want you to see parts of it. So I like, I like pan into the darkness. That's so cool. I love using this lens. Look at the, like the lens flares that are happening. And yeah, there's grain. Cause like, you know, I'm shooting at night and like at like 1200. ISO, but that's with an A7S, which is really good in low light. But yeah, this was so much fun to shoot. Hopefully this has made this video a little more enjoyable compared to some of the more, I don't know, sort of hastily made tests. That's not what I wanted to do here. But now of course it's time to run the export test here. Hopefully the M3 Pro makes better time than the M3 did compared to the M2. Although I'm gonna run those tests or exports off camera again, just to make sure my numbers are correct or accurate. But here we are, um, H.264, 4K 120 timeline in three, two, one, go. All right, so this rendered in two minutes and 56 seconds. Pretty close, I would argue. I mean, I definitely could tell that the timeline was a little more responsive because of the extra graphical horsepower, CPU horsepower, and RAM, but I mean, the export times, not that much different. Maybe if you have a longer project with more layers and stuff, that would make a difference, but you know, it's pretty impressive how a thousand dollar MacBook Air exported this just about as fast as the uh, $2,000 MacBook Pro that I have here. So let me write this down, 256, 74, so 257 more so. Okay, here I am off camera. We have all three MacBooks in question lined up here. We're gonna render the video again here and I have a stopwatch to see just how long these take again. No background rendering happening. It's all an equal playing field, you know, really controlled environment. Let's see what happens.
All right, so they've all finished exporting here. Let's look at the times. So the M3 Pro did it in three minutes, almost exactly. The M3 model finished eight seconds later, and then the M2 MacBook Air finished about seven and a half seconds later. So about eight second delay um, between each of these laptops, which is not a lot, especially considering how much cheaper the M2 MacBook Air is. And for your reference and recollection, here's a little visual with all the export times and their respective applications, and of course, processors. So what have we learned here? What are my final thoughts after sitting here for an eternity doing these demos? Um, I'm surprised that there isn't more of a difference between the M2 MacBook Air and of course the M3 Pro compared to the M3 here. Um, I'm really surprised how well Apple Silicon stacks up, you know, across the generations, fan or no fan, eight gigabytes versus 18 gigabytes. I mean, the performance across the board here was pretty similar if you ask me. Again, my tests are not end all be all. I think I didn't say that, but I'll say it here now. You know, you can't really take my video and go, oh, well, that's gonna, you know, prove to me if I need a higher spec thing. I think you know if you need higher specifications. I do, because I do crazy 8K stuff, which you'll see in another video. And I will say extra horsepower and RAM do make a difference in the moment on the timeline when you're just sort of scrubbing through and just sort of working second to second. So, you know, it's not like a mistake to buy a more expensive, you know, configuration or to buy an M3 MacBook Pro over an M2 MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. But I mean, export time wise, you know, for the most part, it didn't make too much of a difference, which is a little shocking. But I mean, at least it means that the M3 MacBook Pro is a good purchase. You're not necessarily shooting yourself in the foot and losing out on a bunch of performance that you would otherwise get with the M3 Pro MacBook Pro. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm pretty impressed with this. It is kind of expensive and I'm not gonna lie, it isn't much faster from what I can tell in my tests compared to the M2 MacBook Air. So definitely consider the M2 MacBook Air as well. But if you want this body and the HDMI port and the SD card reader and MagSafe, I mean MagSafe, actually, no, MagSafe isn't an exclusive feature anymore. It's on every single Apple laptop now, except the M1 MacBook Air. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a great laptop. Again, though, um, you know, you might want to consider something a little beefier if you want to have a better time, you know, real time editing. Um, you know, high resolution photos and video in my opinion. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful if you're trying to decide if the M3 MacBook Pro is right for you. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Check out my links to Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and more below. And as always, I'm Noah and I will catch you all in the next one.